There's no question that Freud's most evocative and arresting images are born out of his most intimate relationships with the sitters that he knew well. And I think Head of a Boy is totally the embodiment of Freud's practice. Lucian Freud has a long uh, history with Ireland. We certainly know that he went there in 1948 and he spent some time on the west coast in Connemara. Again in 1948, we know that he first went to Lugler to stay with Una Guinness with his first wife, Kitty Garman. Situated just outside of Dublin, Lugler is essentially one of those magical places, almost make-believe in its sort of enchanting nature. Lugler was the house of Una Guinness. With Una being a Guinness, it was one of the oldest families within Ireland. It sort of had this aristocratic feel to it. But actually at this time, the people who went there weren't just the aristocracy, it was a creative melting pot of poets and artists. And Freud became a frequent guest and was very much involved with that half aristocratic, half bohemian side which Lugola really created. In 1952, his marriage to Kitty had ended and he quickly became involved with Una's niece, Caroline Blackwood. And in 1952, they eloped to Paris and married. And then from there on, and we know that throughout their marriage until 1957, Freud and Caroline were frequent guests at Lugler. Head of a Boy from 1956 is a quintessential example of Freud's output from the 1950s. It is a portrait of Gareth Brown, who was Una Guinness's son and later the custodian of Lugler. Gareth was just a teenager at that point, but they became firm, lifelong friends. The list of people that frequented Lugler stemmed from everyone from the Rolling Stones, actors like Sir John Hurt, Dennis Hopper, and the Beatles. Famously, John Lennon penned the song A Day in the Life, which is in memory to Gareth's younger brother, Tara Brown, who so tragically died in a car accident in the 1960s. Gareth said, of all the people who had gone to Lugolo, it was Freud actually who taught him the most. Freud used to sneak Gareth into the Gargoyle Club in London under his overcoat and introduced him to other artists like Francis Bacon. Freud's work of the 1950s was predominantly executed on this very small focus scale. What Freud has done with Head of a Boy is taking that one step further. It is a small canvas, but because of this, because it fills the frame, it almost magnifies the whole piece. Freud's maxim at this point was that he wanted to exert maximum observation on his subject, and this small scale allowed him to do this. He used very small, fine, sable brushes at this time, and as you look at the painting, you can see each strand of hair is sort of like golden filigree. You have every detail of the mouth, little licks of white paint which just accentuate things. What's wonderful about this painting is this downward introspective gaze of the sitter. The closer you look to this painting, is you really see how remarkable a technician Freud was. The Head of a Boy has remained at Lugola in the collection of Gareth Brown since it was painted in 1956, hung beside the fireplace in the grand sitting room, just below two other paintings, drawings in fact, of Francis Bacon by Lucian Freud, which Gareth also owned. It's really a remarkable painting that delivers this emotional energy and intensity. It's a transfixing image. The more you look at it, the more you are spellbound by it. During Lucian's lifetime, he was well regarded as Britain's greatest living painter. Now, I think seven and a half years after his death, we can unequivocally say that he's one of Britain's greatest ever painters.